So, so with this model, we run into this problem of subscripting. So why isn't a really good variable? It's like the phenotype, but like the phenotype of what? So sometimes we want to like subscript and be like, oh, this is the phenotype of Danny DeVito, right? And now it's not just the genetics at position I. So this summation, we basically took this guy, and instead of writing it all out for all M SNPs, oftentimes it's like 500,000 or a million SNPs, we just write it as this summation, and we say, okay, the genetics of Danny DeVito at the IF SNP that we're looking at, and we sum over that. And then this is his environmental component, and of course Schwarzenegger is an S, so you can see that up there. Of course, not everyone is named Danny DeVito and Arnold Schwarzenegger, so a lot of times we'll index with a J. So what we're saying here is that the phenotype of the JF individual is going to be the summation over all the genetics of the JF individual with the effect of those genetics, and then whatever the environment of that individual is. So I represents the different SNPs or variants there. Exactly, yeah. So I is summing over the SNPs, and J is just which individual is it we're looking at. Is that missing the uh, population mean? Or is that oh, yeah, that's it a is. great question, it is. And the reason it's missing the population mean is because usually we don't really care about the population mean. And um, I dropped it in here because I never write the mu in there. And the reason for this is we usually just will collect all our data and subtract the mean from everybody. And the reason is because that just transforms the y, but doesn't transform these values at all. And so it makes it makes statistics and math more interpretable to get rid of the mean. So really what we just want to know is how much does it like move you from the mean as opposed to knowing what the mean is. Um, so yes, some of my slides I will drop the mean value on, some of them I have it in there. And that's a personal problem on myself because as I was making these slides, I realized I started with having the mean in there and then I dropped having the mean and then I tried to fix it and did a horrible job of that. So, uh, but yes, good, thank you for pointing that out. Um, yeah, so the index was the J. However, we don't really like that very much either. Uh, oh wait, sorry, more stuff to talk about first. So let's talk about this E now. So our E is all of these environmental effects, right? And we hate these. They're just annoying to us geneticists because collecting environmental data is like, okay, I have to go talk to this person and be like, hey, where'd you go to school? What school district was it? How much money are your parents? It's all these questions. And we don't like it. And, and people lie. And a lot of people lie. There's a lot of bad information out there. Nobody wants to actually tell you what they eat at like 11 o'clock while watching TV. So like, yeah. You're never get good information. And luckily for us, we don't really care about that. And the reason <laughs> is because there's this fun field of research called statistics. And what they said is if you have a lot of things that have an effect and you might not know what they all are, but what you do know is that if you sum up all these effects, kind of like the genetics, um, if you sum up all these effects and all these different things, people's environmental, that E at the end of the day, is gonna follow a distribution that looks like this. We call it a normal distribution. And it's kind of hand wavy what I just said, but it's kind of true. We can basically look at individuals and on average, most people tend to have a certain environmental effect. And then there's a few people have a really large or really small environmental effect. But that distribution of what that effect actually is tends to follow a normal distribution. So we just assume that the environmental effect follows a statistical distribution. And this is fantastic. You'll love this little property here. And so basically we kind of forget about all of those unless we're really, really interested in them. Sometimes people will go out and explicitly measure all of these things, and it's great when they do it. There's a few we always measure. Like you always take a person's like sex and height and BMI and age, too. and age. Like these are ones that we know have a really strong effect on a lot of people's phenotypes, especially like age. Mm -hmm. Yeah, taller as you get older, usually, hopefully. And so like- And also you can accumulate mutations. Or and you can like accumulate that. mutations, so things happen. So there's a few that we always measure when we do studies, but like no one's gonna go and try to quantify your access to opportunity. <laughs> like- I've seen it. 
actually. And people do it. A few <laughs> researchers. It's really interesting research, but it's really hard to do, and no one's got that sort of money. So we just assume that all the environmental effects have a distribution that we go from. 